here today um, as a host on a new series called Psychological Insights. I'm here today with Dr. Robert Hamm. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, yeah. He's going to be doing a series in Psychological Insights. And so I'd like to begin by just introducing you today to Dr. Hamm. And uh, it, Doctor, if you would tell us just a little bit about yourself and about your background. Sure, glad to, uh, Rosie, thank you. Um, uh, I'm a psychologist in the uh, town of West Hartford. I've been in uh, private practice for a number of years. Um, and uh, I've worked in different areas over, over those years, uh, including developmental disabilities, uh, forensics and geriatrics, but um, for the past several years, I've uh, had a private practice here in town where I work with individuals and families and couples, um, a, you know, in standard psychotherapy practice, work mm -hmm. uh, with relationship issues and uh, personal growth, spirituality, um, as, a as well as a host of other kinds of problems that psychologists uh, often treat. Um, I also am an adjunct professor, uh, have been for over 30 years, uh, for many years at Central Connecticut State University, um, and I'm a member of the National Register of Health Service Psychologists and the American Association of University Professors, as well as a member of the uh, local Chamber of Commerce here in West Hartford. Okay, sounds mm -hmm. like you come with a, a wealth of uh, experience and um, quite a strong background. Uh -huh. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, zero sum ga sub game. <laughs> right, uh, very good. Get that right. <laughs> um, and so I want to begin by having you explain to the viewers mm -hmm. um, what are we talking about when, when we talk about that term. Uh, well, actually, this is a concept that was introduced years ago when I was in college um, uh, in social psychology and in social sciences. Uh, it, uh, but it has become more popularized in the media. I've seen it many times in uh, news articles, uh, in newspapers, and on television used by, by pundits to explain encounters that occur between various entities. It could be di between different governments, different individuals, and all it, it means, it's a very simple concept, is that when you have an encounter, it, if it's a zero-sum game, um, as you can imagine, zero sum, uh, that uh, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. Um, so the zero sum means if you have a plus on one side, it has to be balanced by a minus on the other so that the net outcome is zero. And that's where that concept comes from. So it's a very simple mathematical concept that has been applied to social sciences. <clears throat> and I like that concept. I uh, introduced that concept many years ago in an article um, uh, that I had published um, uh, in a professional journal uh, to uh, explain how uh, certain kinds of problems that are an outgrowth of our personalities ensue. Uh, a useful concept to help professionals as well as individuals, the layperson, understand how we get into difficulties in relationships at times. So um, in an ideal <clears throat> relationship, we want to have a zero sum? No, just the opposite, in fact. Okay. Uh, this is uh, zero sum is it, uh, so when is it applicable? When is it a good thing? When is it a not a good thing? I think it's important to make that distinction. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes when I'm working with couples, I will explain to them that uh, it depends on the situation you're in. In a relationship, a zero sum is not good. Okay. Um, because you have an investment in a relationship, not only, in, of course, in terms of what uh, is good for you as an individual, but also what's good for your partner. Because if you <coughs> benefit at the expense of your partner, in that case a zero sum game, you lose. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have an investment in what is good for the two of you, and that therefore uh, benefiting your partner benefits you in return. So in relationships, such as in a marriage or a relationship or any kind of interpersonal relationship, uh, a friendship, let's say, a zero-sum game doesn't apply. In fact, this is where it becomes a problem 
and becomes relevant to my work with individuals in my practice. But when, it, when is it good? It's good if you're in, involved in a sport, you know, or in competition, or even sometimes in business, when your objective is to win uh, and uh, uh, to beat somebody. So then in an ideal relationship, um, you, you want it so that, I don't know the right way, so that both people are winning? That's right. Basically, is that, that, am I saying that right? That's right, yep. It's a very simple concept, and I think it's an idea that most people would agree with, yet it's interesting how some people nonetheless seem to operate under the idea that when they're involved in an encounter, especially when a conflict, mm -hmm. and when, you know, I work with couples and dealing with conflict resolution, some people with anger management, uh, when your emotions get to a certain pitch, mm -hmm. Um, your investment is in defending yourself and, and winning over, trying to be right or being, you know, it, it, it just often takes over in relationships and I help couples to understand how that is counterproductive in solving their differences. Okay. Um, and, and so um, when I think about relationships, I think ideally um, you want to have value added for both people in the relationship. Yes, absolutely. Or when you're negotiating a contract even, you want everyone to get something out of it, I, I would think. I mean, ideally, I'm talking about. I'm not saying that's how people always function. But then our, it's almost like our ego gets involved. Yes. And it, I guess my question around it is, do people... Um, are they unaware? Is this an unconscious activity when they get into the winning and losing yes, component it, well, of it? Well, as I was saying, that sometimes when your emotions get pitched, you okay. know, they, they, we often be, be become defensive. We want to justify, we want to defend, um, and it's hard for us to drop our defenses. And so a zero-sum game often takes place. Um, but, you know, I think that there's also... Uh, as you were speaking, I was just thinking that uh, I think this is something that um, even in business relations, in, in life, you know, in terms of its philosophical and spir spiritual ramifications, I think this is a very useful concept. And this is something I want to continue to work on, this concept, and apply it to spirituality. Mm -hmm. So it's a very simple idea, and I'm sure you've heard that many people say what comes around goes around. So even in, in a business encounter, um, mm -hmm. in relations that are not, that don't involve, let's say, um, uh, an intimate relationship or a friendship necessarily, uh, we know that there are ramifications uh, of, for our actions. So even if we feel that we've won, we, we've proven that we're right or that we're better than in some way, ultimately, from a spiritual and philosophical standpoint, there should be an investment we have in a broader sense to those that we encounter in our lives. And if not, we have a tendency, we are susceptible to burning bridges in life, to evoking uh, resentment on the part of others. And this applies also to whether it's international relations or at a very interpersonal level. So ethically and philosophically, I think it has this zero sum game concept has, has ramifications to how we see how we conceptualize, how we approach dealing with every issue in life. So um, how does this correlate with the notion that we should stick up for ourselves, we should stand up for ourselves, we should take care of it? I mean, there's a lot of philosophies out there that tell us that it's important, you know, whatever, to mm. speak your mind, to take care of yourself, to not do something that is um, going to make you feel like you're not gaining in this situation. Right. How would you say it relates into that okay. sort of thinking? Well, thank you. That's a great question. Um, so, you know, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, some people, they need some help in self, being self-advocates. Uh, they are caretakers, let's say, and uh -huh. very good caretakers and very good to others, but they neglect themselves. Right. 
Um, other people are more self-centered uh, and narcissistic. Mm -hmm. um, so the zero-sum game is helpful in helping them to understand uh, that, uh, that being too giving to others Mm -hmm. uh, without taking care of yourself is a, 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 an example of a zero-sum game where the more you give to others depletes yourself. Right. And it's, and it's important, therefore, to pay attention to taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, people who are caretakers have difficulty in getting that. <laughs> I, I can imagine. You know? they, because Being a caretaker myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and so I try to help them understand that you know, one way to help them rationalize, uh, to see it differently, is that if they deplete themselves too much, obviously they're no good to anyone else right. anymore anyway. Right. <laughs> so it's, they're actually, it's self-defeating, even though they're, they, their investment is in helping others, it's actually depleting themselves and they're less, of less value to others. So if they look at it that way, it allows them to feel better about being more, um, uh, uh, compassionate and giving to themselves. Uh -huh. uh, on the other hand, some people are too self-centered and I tried in working with them, help them understand uh, that by giving to others, putting more focus on that, that it comes back. You know, um, that what comes around goes around. If you apply that philosophy, even though it seems as though to them that by giving depletes them, mm -hmm that somehow that they've lost, uh, that it ultimately it comes back to reward them in life. People will like them and, um, and, and feel better towards them and, want and feel more generous towards them in return. So um, I'm guessing, and I'm not a psychologist, but <coughs> uh, we all grow up with different types of personality traits based on our environment and our experiences and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think people probably have an awareness when they come to you that they are winning or losing or that this concept even exists. Would you agree with that? Yes, I'm, um, that's why I'm hoping that this concept, in introducing it, um, will help people to see that more. They'll become more salient and um, people will become more aware of how uh, when they engage in encounters and it doesn't go well and it seems to be a repetitive pattern in their lives, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, being aware of this concept will help them to rectify that and make their relationships and the outcomes of their uh, relations with others more um, satisfying to them. Okay, yeah. so, um, so if you're working with someone to have them first of all understand the concept, um, which as you said seems fairly simplistic, but then changing behaviors to me <laughs> seems like that gets a little more yeah. difficult to yeah. be able to zone in in, oh, yeah. in the middle of an interaction and going, oh, wait a minute, am I trying to win right now? Right, right. Am I like giving too much? Am I, right. you know, what am I doing? So like, how does that come into your practice in terms of sort of helping people identify these different things or, or what might they do about it? Right, well that's, you know, it's a very good point, Rosie. Um, so I, there's an adage that I use uh, with my patients more often than not, uh, whether it applies to the zero-sum game or to other issues or um, concepts that I'm working with them on, and that is that what I have to tell you is very simple, but don't misunderstand its simplicity belies how difficult this is. So even though we un understand a concept, that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. Putting it into practice requires a lot of diligent practice and being brought back to an awareness of. Uh, it's like a mantra that we have to live uh, by and okay. work by every day. Yeah, it's not easy. It, understanding a concept is very different and much easier uh, than putting the and so the if I understand it, where you want everybody is sort of in that sort of middle ground where you're not giving so much that you're depleting your own needs and your own, but you're not uh, taking so much from other people mm -hmm. that you are always, you know, the victim of all kinds of circumstances for yourself and you right. want to stay <laughs> in that place where it's an even balance then between sort of giving and taking. Am I 
I would say ideally. Characterizing that correctly? But except like, it, 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 you know, <laughs> an example that is contrary to that is um, I uh, saw a, um, Tiger Woods uh, interviewed uh, a while back uh -huh. um, on a TV program and he, we all know what a, you know, outstanding golf champion he was and how he was trained. Uh, and as he described his competitiveness, I mean, there's a, there's a kind of a mean-spiritedness that he described in wanting to win and taking pleasure in his, seeing his adversary lose and how much he could beat them. Um, that made him a great champion, that, that really very uh, intense uh, um, sort of investment in winning over. So there are certain instances where in competition, let's say, mm -hmm. in a sport, where this uh, zero-sum game is actually productive. It actually works for you. Mm -hmm. It's a game. Yeah. It's understood as a game, and those are the rules. Mm -hmm. But in life, in relationships, um, sometimes we find ourselves thinking like Tiger Woods mm -hmm. unconsciously, right. not realizing how it gets us into problems. Right. So being aware of this concept can help get us off that and into a better frame of mind so that our ultimate outcome that should be in the back of my, our mind brought to the forefront that if I win something, if, I, if somehow that uh, I'm finding myself investing in being right or winning over, really ultimately I'm losing mm -hmm. in this relationship because I am not allowing my partner to feel better in this relationship. I, I have nothing to gain, all, everything to lose if by winning my partner feels worse, feels defeated, feels thrust, frustrated, um, it's, then right. it, it's, it's counterproductive. You know, you, when you were talking about Tiger Woods, I feel, I just want to see what your take is on, it yeah. seems like today in schools and with kids in a lot of competitions, yeah. they're all winners. Yeah. Everybody gets a trophy. Right. You know, even the people that lost get you know, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right, right. It's like with kids today or with groups today, it, it, there either aren't any awards because everybody gets something. Right, right. Does that help in people's development, would you say? that? It no, not at all. <laughs> no. Because you think that's not reality or, I mean, like when they go mm. on in life, it doesn't really work that way? Or, I mean, it does seem like we've kind of moved to that place where... Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I know. It yeah. reminds me of seeing a, a, a George Carlin, the comedian, one of his uh, <laughs> comedy shticks. He talked about, you know, the idea of specialness uh, is so popular today. And, you, and uh, he went on to say, that, but if everybody's special, it loses all meaning. It has no <laughs> <laughs> meaning whatsoever. <laughs> no. Um, no, I think uh, the famous psychologist uh, Martin Seligman had, uh, has talked and written about this idea. If everybody, if you always have to be a winner, um, you're not learning important lessons in life. No, it's not about that at all. I mean, uh, <clears throat> self-esteem, we're kind of going off on a, a bit of a tangent, but self-esteem should be based, founded in reality, uh -huh. that we need to learn that we can't always win. Okay. Um, uh, but, you know, if you find yourself personalizing those losses and crushed by them, then it becomes a problem. But... Uh, the antidote to that problem is not to believe or live in a fantasy world where you have to win all the time. Okay. Then I under that world, you develop a sort of a narcissistic pattern where you feel entitled, uh -huh. and that's not a good life lesson, Yeah. You know, yeah. obviously. Okay. Yeah. Um, you had mentioned um, that this also applies in the area of spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain a little bit, like, how, how, how is that? How would that apply there? I mean, I kind of understand if it's a husband and a wife and you're in a, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationship where, you know, you've explained that, but how does that broaden out into, you know, the area of spirituality? Yeah, spirituality is uh, an area that I uh, have written a couple of uh, blog articles on. It's becoming more and more important to me as I get older. I think that's not uncommon as we get older. Mm -hmm. Today, um, I think that a lot of people are searching for answers in life, what's the meaning of life, and relying less on uh, religion or dogma that w people were brought up with or that we used to rely on. 
that vacuum that's been created, I think, has created a search for spirituality in, um, that is in a more secular way, not necessarily attached to some kind of dogmatic idea about you know what uh, life is all about, but rather we're searching to find our own answers. I think that's what spirituality is about, trying to understand what life is about, its meaning, and uh, our connection, our relationship with existence itself. Um, so uh, this concept, I think, uh, is useful in helping us to understand that we're part of something greater mm -hmm. in life, um, that we have an investment not only in our relationships with our partners, but with our communities and the world and the planet that we live in, the things that we do uh, that are, uh, show disregard uh, or wasteful uh, attitude uh, eventually comes around uh, to, uh, to haunt us in, in one way or another. So <clears throat> when we think of uh, doing things in life that uh, benefits our own prosperity, we always have to think, I think, it's the world is too small. We always have to think about what is the, what are the ramifications of our behaviors, our investments in our own prosperity on the rest of the world. Uh, that uh, otherwise, by disregarding it, it becomes like a zero-sum game where, the, where uh, those uh, uh, people or entities our planet uh, that's disregarded suffers as a result if we're not mindful about what benefits others uh, as well as what benefits ourselves. So would you say that uh, zero sub game is karma? Uh, I guess it, you know, could say it's sort of related to, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I think it's a very um, appealing notion, isn't it? Uh, whether or not there is such a thing, uh -huh. I don't know. but. Um, uh, you know, it's sort of like the old adage that uh, people say, you know, uh, th uh, things, I uh, believe things happen in life for a reason. So how do you take that? On a metaphysical way, meaning that there's some kind of, um, uh, I don't know, dynamic in existence that, uh, uh, that there's a sort of a plan? Or you could take it as, you know, that if we look at it that way, it, it forces us to think about uh, what are the ramifications of our behaviors? And if we're uh, confronted with adversity in life, uh, we have an opportunity to learn from it rather than be crushed by it. Um, so um, karma, I think, it, uh, is a, another example of that. Whether or not there is such a thing as karma, to see life in terms of what comes around, goes around, is a good ethic to live by. Mm -hmm. So um, if a person or a couple comes to you for some help on this and you sort of explain this concept to them, um, what would the expectations mm. be in terms of, I don't know, how long does it take a person <laughs> to sort of begin to put this into their life or how successful is this by understanding this? I mean, wh how would you sort of rate that? I mean, you have the practice, so you right. know, yeah. I, I'm not sure, but I, I'm just curious as to how you kind of see it working for people. Um, well, you know, um, honestly, I don't usually use this term, zero-sum game, very frequently. It's more of a concept that I use in, in thinking and working with patients. Okay. Sometimes I will use the term. Right. Um, so it, it's not like on the first visit you say, let me sit down and explain right. what zero-sum game is for right. you, and then we'll go from there. Right, no, okay. no just uh, for uh, in my blog article and in, in, yeah. in my interview yeah. with you, it's <laughs> writing. That's, but um, it is a concept that I use, obviously, as, a, as you know, uh, as I'm speaking with you yeah. about in how I work with patients. It's a concept that's useful. Um, everybody's different. Uh -huh. Some people need uh, this concept more than others. Um, if you have been brought up, uh, raised, or if you've developed this idea that uh, winning is necessary in order to feel good about yourself at the expense of others, that that's the way you encounters happen in life, um, then we have some work to do there um, uh, in trying to um, so to bring it home, pr make it present for a person to understand how it affects their lives at, you know, at a very tangible level in their lives in specific situations. Okay. Uh, and that may take some time right. um, for them to understand that. So 
the way to bring that home to them is to, is to give them concrete examples. Uh, how the, how their behavior eventuates in this kind of win-lose situation and it eventuates ultimately in problems that they don't understand how they get themselves into, repeated patterns in life that uh, bring unhappiness or dissatisfaction uh, in, that are confusing to mm -hmm. many people. I see. Um, so um, I'm wondering if people want to find out more about um, your blog and get a hold of you and mm -hmm. find out more about this. Yeah. Um, can you tell us how somebody might contact you? Uh, certainly. Well, I have a website, uh, Robert Ham with two M's, uh, PhD.com. Okay. Uh, you can read all about my practice, and there is a blog attached to my website. Uh, and I uh, enter a blog about once a month. Um, and uh, so you can learn all about me there. Um, this concept, the zero-sum game, is a concept that was uh, introduced in an, an article I had published in 2009 in a, a professional journal. So if you're more uh, intellectual or academically inclined, you could uh, uh, research that article. It's in the Psychoanalytic Review. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, are there other things that you feel like you wanted to touch on about this that we haven't really explored at this point? Anything you want to add into this? I um, well, um, trying to think what else would <laughs> it apply to? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered all the bases, or as yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope that this is a useful concept. Um, I introduced this concept in that article as it applies to um, something that we in the mental health field deal with um, you know, that we call personality disorders. But now I'm broadening this concept to apply to many different situations. Uh, I hope in my writing to apply it more into spirituality, as we were talking about earlier, but also in my practice working with individuals. It doesn't have to be applied to personality disorders per se. I think it's a useful concept. As I said, it's used in the media often. Uh, that can be used uh, useful to many individuals, um, uh, regardless of your background or uh, the kinds of issues that you're struggling with in life. And so, um, I'm guessing, and and maybe you need to tell me this: um, mm -hmm. if people are interested in seeing you, are uh -huh. you taking uh, new patients at this point oh, in yeah. time, new yep. clients, yep. so they could get a hold of you also and? through your website or whatever and be able to locate you if they want to explore for themselves oh. and, and uh, work on some of these issues on their own. Oh, absolutely, certainly. Uh, so you could uh, just Google me, you know, uh -huh. or again, my website at roberthamphd.com and learn all about, all about my practice there, yeah. Okay, um, and uh, my understanding is too that um, you're going to be doing a series of psychological insights where you'll be back on a somewhat regular basis and people can find those also on your website as you continue continue to develop these and yes yes so this uh, this uh, zero-sum game is going to be going into my blog um, and there are several other articles on various topics that will be that I'll be talking about uh, as I go along with this series, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, well, this has been fascinating. Yeah, uh, yeah. A new way to sort of think about things and think yeah. about how we interact with yeah. other people. Certainly a pleasure to meet you and My to well. spend this time with you today. Okay. And thank you very much for tuning in and uh, to the first uh, in hopefully a long series of psychological insights. Uh, this has been Dr. Robert Hamm and I'm Rosie Sanko. Have a pleasant day.